and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, on my channel, I like to get value for money, but I also like you to use what you have. And sometimes when we see these gorgeous, beautiful things on videos, we want what they have, or we think we need what they have to make things work. So I kind of in my head always say, there's always more than one way. There's always more than one way. So I am going to show you more than one way today. Now I'm going to start off this is simple there is not much to it but I love this design it's nice and quick now I am just using my ruler here to find roughly the halfway point uh, even though I'll trim it down a little bit later on I'm going to put a piece of mint tape because I want a nice solid sharp crisp masked line going down the center now, you just saw a minute ago that I had a couple of embossing folders that I am excited to use, and they just create the most beautiful dimension. Now, these cards could almost be one color cards if you wanted them to be, where you can just choose one color of ink and go to town. I am choosing Spiced Marmalade Distress Oxide Ink today. You can use pigment inks, you can use dye inks, you could use watercolor washes, you could use some Tim Holtz Distress Crayons, you could use um, anything watercolor pencils I don't know paints acrylic paints water them down you could use waxes and just water them down a little bit you could use the lunar paste from Simon Hurley and you could water those down a little bit anything to get a nice sort of gradient from heavier to lighter from the center of the page now I did put another strip of the mint tape there so that I could guarantee I was not going to go above it now look at that beautiful crisp line now now this is the Daisy Tiles 3D embossing folder from Altenew. Again, you don't have to have special embossing folders for this. I just love this pattern. And when you kind of get this out and some of the coloring, it just enhances this beautifully. Now we are going to keep life so simple. I am going to use some alphabet dies. Now I will be the first to say that alphabet dies can be pretty pricey. These ones are from scrapbook.com and that is their brand. Uh, they also carry a million other brands, but this is their branded one. Um, and I will say that they have great sales on their brand pro uh, products. They have lots of sales anyway in general and they usually always have one if not at least two freebies that you can add to your cart for free um, so I do like shopping there for me as an international shopper they have some of the fastest cheapest international shipping um, sometimes international shipping is just insane uh, but I do live in New Zealand and I understand that we are a little way away sometimes and that's okay it's your choice to shop around you might have a local craft store that's well you might even come across uh, across an op shop or a second hand store that just happens to have some craft supplies in it um all good ways that you can get these things but as i said i'm going to show you in a minute another way that we can go about this now uh in the set of alphabet dies there was uppercase and lowercase letters i chose to go just the uppercase Obviously, I have got at the word happy, and I was hoping to do sort of an ombre-ish look, sort of, but I just, I didn't like it as much. Now, when I'm looking back at this, editing it, I think it looks fine. However, I feel like the tops of the letters just get lost. So at this point, we scrap that plan, and I'm going to use my mint tape. This is the mint tape that I used right at the very beginning to do the masking. I always reuse the tape plenty of times until I really can't use it anymore. And I just usually stick it up on the table in front of me or beside me so that I can keep reusing it over and over again until it's truly done. Um, I love this tape. It does not rip your paper. Almost guaranteed. It is the perfect amount of stick. I love mint tape. Here I'm going to go in and just reuse that other piece to create a border. Now I just put the uh, low tech tape the mint tape along the border and just add a heavy layer of the spiced marmalade ink and then this is just going to save me having to add a matting layer I do this often I even just color it with pens whatever you have handy just to create that extra layer without actually having the bulk of the matting layer of cardstock um, and then I'm going to add some double-sided tape to the back here and then pop this down onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base 
Now, as I said, there are always lots of ways to go about things. And from here, you could add some twine around it. You could add some ribbon across it. You could add little enamel dots on all of those points. Um, that's sort of where in the embossing folder where they all intersect or where they meet. Or you can make a pattern out of it. I mean, go for gold at this point. But I'm going to keep this really happy and simple. I've got the word happy that is going to go across the top. And this, I think once I have covered these in the spiced marmalade completely, I think they stand out really, really well on that uh, sort of stark white background. But as I said, this could truly be a one color card because all you would need is to add in the birthday part stamped in the same color and you'd be good to go. I am using some liquid glue. Inside this little glue bottle is the Ranger Multi Medium in the matte finish. So that's a liquid glue and it's sort of um, kind of like a gel, almost a glue. I buy these specific glue bottles which are perfect. They never clog for me. Uh, and I live in a warm environment in the summer but a really cold environment in the winter um, and I've never had them clog. Uh, and I have a video on my channel if you just search how to fill glue bottle on YouTube or you can search my channel and that will show you the mess free and stress free way that you can fill those glue bottles. Now these are two grey coloured inks. I have Pebble which is actually the lighter one and Twilight from Catherine Puller. I was trying out the lightest one but I thought it was just a tad too light. Now honestly side by side here they do look quite similar I will say but the Pebble is definitely a little bit lighter. I love that I found some good greys. It's taken me a while, but I think I'm a convert to the Catherine Puller ones. I do love her inks. They are, for me, a little bit more expensive. Um, the refills and the ink pads are quite expensive. So I am not going to go ahead and get her full set. I do have some colours. In fact, I have a couple of minis in hers. They are fantastic inks. They stamp beautifully. For a dye ink. They are water reactive, all good things. I, From what I have used of Catherine Paula's inks, I absolutely love them. Now, just because I thought that that little block of the birthday sort of took up too much room, I did fussy cut around it and I like this okay. Very clean and simple card. Very, very simple and it didn't take me very long to make this at all. But here's the alternative. If you have some stamps, now these ones here are from Vicky P. Now these are from Stamperia. They are actually acrylic. They are not photopolymer. However, that means that they have a really low price point. I think these are six or maybe closer to seven dollars US, of course, uh, on the scrapbook.com site anyhow. And so that is a really good price point for the alphabet. So I'm going to write the word happy instead of using dyes which can be much, much, much more expensive, um, I'm going to use some stamps. Now, because I obviously need two Ps and the set only comes with one, I did turn the D upside down and sort of around so that I can just get the placement right. Now, honestly, it almost looks close enough to the P that I feel like I could stamp it, but um, it just wasn't quite the same and I wanted it to be the same. So I've put this in my little stamping platform. I've had quite a lot of questions recently about the grid in the background. This is the Sizzix Sticky Grids. I think they are about six by eight and a half inches or so that they come and they have two sides to them. So I just put one side down and then you can see I can hold it down by washi tape. And then of course, when one side eventually wears out, I don't know, I tend to get about uh, three to four to five months, I guess, out of one side, I will turn them over and use the other side again. And one package, I think, comes with five double-sided sheets. So it's lasted me. I've never had to buy more after I bought the first one. <laughs> and this just means that I don't have to use magnets at all. It holds down my paper. It holds whatever I'm stamping. I absolutely love it. So you can't clean them. You obviously, once one side is kind of, um, I have used like a wet cloth on them and it's fine, but I, I can't imagine that you can do that over and over and over again. Now I'm going to do a similar technique here. I have some uh, cracked pistachio, I think the color is, and I recently re-inked all of my Distress Oxide inks. So now I have to be quite aware when I'm inking, if I want a light coverage, 
I usually need to blot off to sort of figure out where the um, sponge is, you know. If it's already been used previously, then it has some ink already loaded onto it. And I need to make sure that I'm not going to get a big sort of blob of ink as soon as I put it down there. So um, that's one thing to remember. I do love a good juicy ink pad, but it does mean if you're doing a really nice sort of... Um, you know, ombre effect that you have to be aware of how much ink is loaded on there. Now, as you saw in the beginning, I have the postcards embossing folder, which I absolutely love. I think this one is would be good for boys and men as well. That's why I've chosen to go sort of the greeny blue route. And I think this one would be perfect for a guy. So I have once again masked it off just over top of the stamping. Again, all one color, all the same color. And then I'm going to run this through with the postcards embossing folder. And so many things I was thinking of doing with this. I was so excited to see this one. Um, and run it through and just that gorgeous texture on the bright white is stunning. Now, from here, I am going to sort of do a, a little bit similar. But at this point, you can see I'm just marveling over the gorgeous embossing folder. Sometimes even myself, I just take a minute and just look at it. It's actually stunning. Embossing folders are beautiful. And I love this postcards one. I can't stop looking at it. I keep moving it around and just thinking of all the things that I can do with this one. So I was very excited to say the least to get this one. Now I'm going to do, as I said, somewhat similar, but a little bit different. I'm going to use the same birthday stamp set. Now this is the Doodlebug Happy Birthday stamp set. I love this. I think it's very versatile. I don't always love stamping with Distress Oxide inks. For whatever reason, I don't tend to get a gorgeous crisp uh, stamp with them. I know some people can do fabulous work. It's just not my thing and that's okay. That's why this took me three goes to get a gorgeous little um, print there. But we got it in the end and that's why paper has two sides so that we can keep trying. And I'm just going to do a very simple square. I think um, cutting it out finely like I did before is not always my favorite thing to do. Now right at this point I, my camera has decided to go out of focus. It clearly didn't like what I was doing. So all I'm doing is I've taken my cut hard base and I am going to um, put the Distress Oxide, the Cracked Pistachio all around the outside to create the border. And then look, as soon as I'm finished it comes good. So my apologies, I had no idea it was doing that on me, but that's okay. And then it's just time to put all of our elements together. I don't need to do that middle part there. You can see it looks like a hot mess, but that's going to get covered up. And I'm just going to pop this down. So this is instead of doing the masked border like I did on the previous one. And this is why I say it's important to double check your measurements all the way through because whatever I did to this card front, it did not equal <laughs> um, happiness when it came to lining things up. You can see that I've cut two sides and clearly it's not working. So I did think about putting it up in the top right hand corner and I truly was really about to press down right now and be good. But I just didn't want it up there. It just didn't work for me. So I'm going to change my plan. Now this is where I decide to introduce a new color. So you can tell me if this is something you would have done or just left it. I am tearing off the double-sided adhesive on the back. I could have just added some uh, anti-static powder and that would take away the stick. I did tear up a little bit of the back, but no one's going to notice that at all. Now this is a gorgeous dark ink. This is a rustic wilderness and this is obviously a darker green. Now this was a bit of a bold move, but I quite like the extra little added border. Um, and I, again, I'm just reusing some of that mint tape. I reuse it over and over again. And you just have to be careful not to get your fingers in any of the green ink and then put it on that gorgeous white background that we have created. But I just think this border helped it stand off from the background. I, of course, trimmed it previous to this so that now it is going to have a nice equal border. Then I add some more double-sided tape around. Then this is going to go nicely onto my four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. And it has equal sides all around. Now these cards are gorgeous and simple and beautiful. I had so much fun creating them, but there is always more than one way. If you don't have the specific dies, there's always another way that we can create it. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope that it has given you some ideas or inspired you. If it has, then come on over to my Facebook group called Come Crafting with Natasha and you can post your photos over there that, so that I can see them and your gorgeous work. Uh, if you would like to support my channel, I will leave a link to the Buy Me A Coffee website down below. 
other than that thank you so much for joining me i hope you've enjoyed this video and i truly look forward to seeing you in the comment section or in the next video thanks bye